I congratulate the Indian Embassy in Romania, the Rabindranath Tagore Cultural Center, the Department of Modern Languages and Business Communication of the Bucharest University of Economic Studies for organizing this conference dedicated to Indian studies, cultural studies, and feminist approaches. India and Romania have cordial diplomatic relations since 14 December 1948 at the legacy level were upgraded to embassy level in 1957. Romania opened an embassy in New Delhi in 1955. India opened an embassy in Bucharest in 1957. Romanian prime minister visited India in March 1958. These are the cordial affectionate relationship India and Romania have enjoyed. In the current crisis uh, in Ukraine, amid heavy shelling, bombing, screams of helpless people, and war cries of soldiers, the only solace Indian students could eventually get was the shelter offered by Romanian locals and Indian students living in Romania. The people of Romania were providing us food, drinking water, fruit juice, clothes, woolen jackets, even SIM cards to talk with our loved ones. This act of kindness and solidarity by Romanian state and the civil society will always remain in the hearts of Indian students who have safely reached India. And I think this is the expression hundreds of Indian students have expressed. It is very important to critically reflect on cross-cultural studies from feminist perspective and understand dimensions of universal standard of gender equality in different cultural contexts and their interpretations. In the Indian context, both the women's rights movement and women's studies and gender studies have provided such space for reflections on the cross-cultural perspectives. Dialectical relationship between pedagogy and praxis vis-a-vis -vis women's question has been a matter of great concern for the pioneers of women's studies all over the world. The need to study women's issues in the academic institutions and to conduct research based on experiential material, affirmative action was beginning to be discussed among Indian women's studies scholars by the early 80s, 1980s. The discourse on this subject has proved to be fruitful exercise for activists, academicians, researchers, policy planners, and the UN system. My presentation is trying to examine the genesis of interactions between women's studies and women's movement in India, the contribution of women's studies to mainstream ac academic academia, such as economics, political science, sociology, literature, history, education, psychology, and the analytical tools and theoretical insights provided by both women's studies and women's movement in India. The research methodology and agenda of women's studies, ongoing debates on scope and limitations of women's studies within the institutionalized structures, the shift of focus from women's studies to gender studies, and the economics and politics of funding consultancy priorities in research and the pioneers of women's studies, the way they defined it, this discipline that evolved, uh, that involved research, documentation, teaching, training, and action. Women's studies is not an ivory tower discipline. It has an action agenda to transform the gender biases and the uh, oppression, exploitation, subjugation, degradation, and injustices that women face. Use the knowledge of women's studies to to empower them, to enhance their capacity, and to give them gender justice. It is understood that women have subordinate status in our society. So the knowledge base created by women's studies should be used for uh, women's equality and justice, liberty, and equal opportunity. Uh, hence, there is a need to examine what, to what extent women's studies in India have served this purpose. Now, the historical background and evolution of women's studies that we see that the first way of feminism, uh, the, the phase that was marked by first generation of English educated women's struggle against child marriage, widow burning, female infanticide, and the efforts for education of women and also the franchise, adult franchise, voting right of women. Its gender politics touched only women from the upper caste and upper class. 
In the second wave of feminism, which started from 1970 onwards, uh, that uh, educated middle-class women who were actively involved in different social movements of students, youth, workers, peasants, uh, tribals, uh, Dalits, and the civil liberties played a central role. And I think that trajectory we have seen even globally in the post-colonial countries that uh, new generation of educated women, they, they spearheaded the women's rights movement. They abhorred the paternalism of benevolent men and upper class, upper class women's charitable and philanthropic social work, declared themselves as fighters for women's rights. Hence, the gender politics was focused on women's agency and women uh, were seen not merely as a passive and mute victim of discrimination, injustice, exploitation, but also the, the, the shaper of their own destiny and active agents who were challenging the gender-based discrimination, gender violence in all spheres of their lives. And the current third wave of feminism, what we see that the, it essentially covers the perspectives from those marginalized and excluded from previous waves of feminism. They are Dalit women, tribal women, women of color, women from the post-colonial uh, uh, so, uh, economies and countries, uh, young women, differently abled women, women from ethnic and religious minorities and women with alternate sexuality. This wave is de has deepened the discourse of discontent. Uh, third wave acknowledges the benefits of second wave of feminism, provides a worldview of a young feminist from the global south. Current stage of women's studies is informed by third wave of feminism, whose ideological moorings lay in the post-structuralist interpretation of gender and sexuality. Hence, disciplines such as literature, politics, arts, uh, fine arts, cultural criticism, history and sociology have played a dominant role in defining gender politics. They critique male-female binary that are seen in, uh, by them as an artificial construct created to maintain the power of dominant group. Proponents of third wave feminism claim that it allows women to define feminism for themselves by incorporating their own identities into the belief system uh, of what feminism is and what it can become through one's own perspective. Contemporary gender politics encompasses macro, micro, and meso realities in all spheres, economy, polity, jurisprudence, policy making, local, national, and regional governance, uh, and also global governance also, they are, they are giving their uh, positions. While the diversity in social fabric uh, has historically seen continuities and contestations, interactions between different social segments have increasingly come to be mediated through socioeconomic processes where the needs and principles of marketized economy prevail. This is all the more so support, uh, so apparent uh, since 1990s when the new economic policies were put in place as a result of the uh, agenda of uh, structural adjustment and stabilization of the economies in the post world, in the post colonial societies, and the social sector budgetary allocations got reduced drastically. While the years after independence saw significant attempts to negotiate women's rights in different spheres with the aim of keeping alive guiding principles laid out by the progressive constitutions uh, in, in several countries, the current policy frameworks and paradigms of development pose serious challenges to these efforts. In the pre-independence period in India, academics were concerned with status of women in higher caste and classes. Reasons for widow burning, child marriage, parta, that means uh, chado, uh, illiteracy among women, se segregation of women from the larger social life, socio political, cultural lives, found extensive reference in their works. In the post independence period in India, two distinct periods can be discerned up to 1974 and the years after that. Before 1974, the focus of scholars interested in women's question was on the role conflict of the middle-class women. 
Very few studies situated problems of women in the context of macro forces of development process. The only exception was a scholarly work of a mother of women studies, Professor Nira Desai, who came up with a landmark contribution, Women in Modern India, which was her doctoral thesis also. She was the person who established the first women's study center in our country in the women's university, SNDT Women's University, way back in 1974. Towards Equality Report that was prepared as a, because of the UN mandate on status of women's uh, report, which were demanded from 165 member countries. And uh, this report uh, in which, which was prepared by the scholars with an interdisciplinary perspective and was presented in the parliament where it received tremendous response from the decision-making bodies, the state apparatus and the print media. Principal research bodies like Indian Council of Social Science Research provided financial support to the scholars committed to women's cause and to conduct the research into the problems faced by women in poverty groups. Unlike it, its Western counterpart, women's studies in India evolved as a result of state patronage after the declaration of United Nations International Women's Year and subsequently International Women's Decade from 1975 to 85. Publication by the government of India in 1975, the, the report on status of women's committee reopened the debate on women's question. The report revealed deteriorating conditions of women as, with the three startling revelation of adverse sex ratio, the continuously declining proportion of women and girls into the population of India as compared to their male counterparts. Marginalization of women from the economy, uh, declining work participation of women, and the gender-based discrimination in the family laws, and also very high maternal mortality and child mortality, which only poverty could not explain. There was cultural reasons for that because Indian women eat last least and left over. Dialogue between women's studies and women's movement also started in the post-emergency period in 1977. And it was in the early 80s that women's study centers functioning autonomously or within the university system started accepting empirical and experiential uh, evidences of the women's movement. Uh, this was a time when participatory research, ex action research, subaltern studies were gaining ground in the field of social sciences. This process indirectly facilitated the interactions between women's studies and women's movement. And in the first national conference of women's studies in 1981, hosted by SNDT Women's Universities, wide variety of issues were discussed by activists, researchers, academicians, policymakers, and media uh, uh, activists, uh, journalists, and uh, creative artists. Now, this included developmental process which bypassed women, gender biases in textbook, sexism in media, gender blindness in science and technology, health needs of women and violence against women, such as rape, domestic violence, and uh, forced prostitution, child prostitution. The general consensus among the participants, both men and women, was that women's studies was a pro-women. It was not neutral. Uh, it was seen as women's studies should build a knowledge base for empowering women by placing change at the policy level, evidence-based policy implementation should be there, and in curriculum development by examining, identifying sexism in the textbooks, and also providing an alternative by criticizing gender blindness, as well as gender biases within the mainstream academia, by creating alternative analytical tools and reasons, and by advocacy for women's development needs in, in the economy and in society. This conference established new trend by which gradually women activists were invited as resource persons and participants academics in the academic seminars, consultations, and training workshops. During the 80s, an increasing number of women's rights activists became involved in women's studies, either as independent researchers or as consultants, trainers, resource persons uh, for, for several academic institutions and government programs. Uh, so many new uh, ventures, for, for example, uh, 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 participatory action research, oral history matters, they were also got institutionalized and some of the important 
publications which came out, Women's Writings in India, from 600 BC to the present, the two volumes in which, for which more, more than 40 women activists and researchers and academicians have worked together. So the collective wisdom and arriving at a collective uh, uh, action plan, that became a very important concern in the women's studies and women's movement. The dual roles of theory and praxis or academic exercise and action, uh, which uh, women's studies and women, uh, uh, women's movement emphasized was crystallized uh, in, a, uh, in this statement by the uh, pioneers of women's studies movement that women's studies provides contextualization of knowledge in the process of both understanding and changing women's reality. Uh, as a movement, it emphasizes the need for providing material basis for equality and independence movement, as it was articulated by Professor Maitre Krishnaraj in 1986. Uh, this approach accepted the dual role of women's studies as a discourse and also as a movement. So I think the first step in this direction was to make women visible in various academic disciplines, highlighting their roles and contribution and capturing their experiences, not as a victim, but as an active agent who are shaping the, you know, their own destiny and also making valuable contribution for the nation building. By creating legitimacy for women's studies as a researchable area, uh, efforts were made to break silence surrounding role of women and the silence of women themselves. Thus, women's studies became a process of unfoldment of women, making women visible not only in additive process, uh, which was happening earlier, but also the, the may, may, uh, showing the nuances of their contribution and not uh, the add and stir approach was abandoned. And the women's studies approach, which was challenging the dominant notion of knowledge methodology and the data sources based on class, ethnicity, caste, religion, and gender biases. So intersectionality become a very important uh, concern and the inter justice, intersectional justice that became the important uh, agenda of the women's movement. Now, another related problem with visibility is about new indicators, new standards, new criteria, for visibility creation and women's studies makes uh, women visible not as sex object but as active agent in socio economic, cultural, and political processes. It also looks at gender not as a collection of psychological traits but as a basic element of social structure, especially of sexual division of labor, which is tied to gender division and male domination as it was retreated by. Uh, Yukal Pagam, a pioneer in the women's studies movement in our country. Women's studies attempts to towards visibility of women in statistics and indicators by questioning the concept of work, uh, productive work, uh, head of the household, and also the whole care economy where collection of fuel, fodder, water, uh, cooking, cleaning, caring, uh, kitchen gardening, and also animal care, which large majority of women in subsistence sector do. So the construction of knowledge uh, in various disciplines for social transformation became very important. And what we uh, try to uh, women studies evolved a research methodology, the tools and methods of analysis by re-examining the concepts, using new concepts to understand uh, women's predicament and women's reality. Role theory as used in conventional researches in sociology to study working women was questioned by the women's study scholar, the, uh, the, 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 women's, uh, the, the mainstream neoclassical economics, which, uh, which believed in the utility theory and the maximized princip maximization principle was questioned by gender economists in our country. And uh, uh, we also, uh, women's studies also came up with the challenging of the hardcore disciplines of psychology, uh, where the Freudian uh, thinking, misogynist thinking about Oedipal complex and Electra complex were, were the most dominant theories as against that. Women, femin feminist psychoanalysts, they talked about uh, certain advantages which the Freud gave, but at the same time, the misogyny and the male bias in the Freudian analysis of psycho uh, psychology, which resulted in victim blaming 
uh, was abandoned and uh, new methods of counseling for caregivers or a dialogical approach uh, between the people who are the uh, survivors of violence and the counselor uh, were established. Uh, from descriptive uh, st uh, initial descriptive studies in women's studies, the, the move was more to analytically rigorous, critically reflective uh, intellectual uh, formation and intellectual exercises. When the UGC legitimized women's studies center and 144 women's studies centers were established in the university system, uh, the, the more dilution of the perspective happened. The women's studies have provided an exhaustive critique of environmental policies. They have advocated the livelihood concerns. And there are areas which are very important, like reproductive rights, disability, uh, gender and disability, sexual harassment at workplace, which has emerged as the major problem in the 21st century, where women are entering uh, the, the areas which were monopolized earlier by men and also the question of health health and well being women's predicament in the conflict zones and conflict areas and in the war zones uh, uh, sex workers solidarity with the sex workers a uh, varied form of violence against women with uh, with, with in, increased intensity and the increased brutality and also the series of legal reforms that we need to get justice for the survivor of violence and discrimination in the 21st century, the major critical reflection in the women's movement and women's studies have been on impact of economic globalization on uh, women's survival and livelihood uh, needs, uh, changing profile of women's work with the whole future of economic future of work and massive uh, influx of automation, mechanization, and uh, artificial intelligence, uh, information technology based uh, work labor processes. Feminization of poverty, gender and climate change, gender concerns in science and technology, uh, rights of LGBT communities, declining sex ratios, sexual harassment at workplace, disability uh, studies, gender, caste, class, and family, uh, the fa family laws that govern most intimate relationships within the family between brother, sister, father, daughter, mother, uh, mother son and the areas such as marriage, divorce, custody of child, uh, guardianship rights, right to maintenance, uh, right to property, inheritance, uh, and how to get the gen uh, gender justice ensured in this uh, family laws is a very important agenda. And individual women have questioned the discriminatory aspects of family laws and the women's movement uh, has uh, supported them and women's studies have done serious researches on these issues. Uh, now, when we see that the intersectionality is a very important concern for the uh, women's movement, and we have seen that uh, from there is also transition in the women's studies movement from women's studies to gender studies, the term gender had its beginning in the 70s as a feminist contribution to public discourse and destabilizing the biological category of sex. Uh, women uh, also, uh, they, the new terminology of gender as a social construct, uh, which, which uh, de determines the power relation and the subordination domination relationship that was uh, adopted. And now the queer studies has also challenged the gender studies and they said gender is not only social construct, it is also uh, interplay of social and biological factors that determine the people's sexual choices. Uh, we have also seen that the feminist studies uh, as a discipline has also been introduced in several parts of the country's men's studies, LGBT studies, lesbian, gays, bisexual, tra transgender studies, queer studies, all of them have played a very important role in challenging the uh, earlier uh, gender binaries. And what we see that women's studies by design are transformative. Women's studies have been critical in unmasking androcentric assumptions that make men and women, men the human norm. The idea that gender studies holds men accountable for gender inequalities in power, while women's studies doesn't, is contradicted by the volumes of women's studies scholarship that precisely do point to men's part in construction of these systems. Part of the dispute may center in various definitions of gender that appear in scholarship 
they range from social relations of sexes to a vocabulary of for power. Given the most of the curriculum and scholarship focus on men, whether gender is used as an analytical framework or not, programs focusing on study of women are critically necessary. State of the art profile of women's studies at the end of this exercise is not neat and clear, as women's life is also not simple. It is full of contradictions. The research activity and the debates generated have reached a level of uh, compensatory research where the women's perspective has been added to the conventional discipline. We need more systematic work to challenge mainstream discipline, build new paradigm, provide significant theoretical understanding, at the same time, not to forget the agenda of social transformation, of gender justice, and a women's rights movement that needs to come use the collective wisdom arrived at after 40 years of activism for ensuring gender justice, economic justice, social justice, environmental justice, uh, and, and, and along with the women's liberation, we are striving for liberation of the humankind and no human liberation is possible without women's liberation. 50% of the world's population needs to be there. And that's why gender mainstreaming, inclusive approach in women's movement and women's studies are need of an art. Thank you very much for providing me this platform to express my ideas.